Hello, and thank you all for standing by. At this time, I would like to inform all participants that your lines are on a listen-only mode until the question and answer session of today's conference. Today's call is being recorded. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. I will now turn the call over to Tanya Vardavarian. Ma'am, you may begin. Hi, thank you so much. Hi, everybody. My name is Tanya Vardavarian, and I'm currently the Acting Program Manager for the CDFI NACA Program Team at the CDFI Fund. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon for this webinar. This is a question and answer webinar, and it is for the CDFI program for the fiscal year 22 application funding round for the financial assistance and technical assistance program. Um, again, this format for the um, webinar today is a Q&A format. Um, before we get started on that, though, I will hand it over to my colleague, Matthew Pickering, who's going to do a brief introduction and um, discuss a little bit about the uh, format for the webinar today. Great. Thank you so much, Tanya, and welcome, everybody, to our CDFI program FY22 question and answer webinar. Um, as Tanya said, today's question and answer series is on the CDFI program. Um, if you look at our website, you'll note that there is a, uh, a companion question and answer webinar for the NACA program tomorrow at the same time uh, at 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, so if you're a NACA eligible group, uh, you, we encourage you to call in tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So we like to start off really quick just by setting a couple of ground rules about general topics that we are not going to be covering today. Uh, and in particular, these are things that, that are sort of always not covered on our webinars, but we won't talk about reasons why your organization might have been uh, unsuccessful in prior award rounds. And we won't be talking about specific instructions on how to enter data into an application in AMIS. Uh, and if you're a core eligible group and you're thinking about matching funds, uh, we won't be asked, we won't be tackling any questions that are specific uh, about matching funds that your organization might have that wouldn't apply to other groups. So here's a, a slide that everyone should be familiar with at this point. This is the schedule of the funding round. Uh, and we've added a red bar here on the schedule just to show you approximately where we are in the process. Uh, so the March 14th deadlines have already passed. And so you'll note that uh, by March 14th, you were required to create your AMIS account, enter your EIN and DUNS numbers in that account, and have your SF-424 submitted and validated in grants.gov. Uh, also, if you're a group that's eligible for the SICA program, and you wished to apply for FA more than $700,000, you would have had to submit a service request to get that uh, application opened by March 14th. So looking forward from today, uh, the next deadline note at 5 p.m. Eastern time on April 8th is the last time that you can submit a service request or otherwise contact the CDFI or NACA program staff. Uh, and a few days later, April 12th, also at 5 p.m. Eastern time, is the last time to submit questions about technical issues to our AMIS IT help desk. And then finally, just before midnight at 11.59 p.m. Eastern on April 12th, that is the final deadline for all CDFI program FA and TA applications. And so that's really all we have to cover today. Uh, in terms of the slides, but, uh, you know, the operator will take a second now to explain the general rules about how to get in the queue and ask questions. Uh, we do want to remind everyone that uh, phone questions are required. Uh, so the chat feature and the Q&A feature that's part of the webinar platform should have been disabled, so you wouldn't be able to use them. Um, just want to let everyone know please do get in the queue to ask your questions verbally uh, so that we can, we can all hear them and answer them uh, together for the benefit of the whole group. Uh, and with that, 
We'll hand it back over to the operator to get the question and answer portion started. Thank you. If you would like to ask a question, please press star one on your phone. Please ensure that your phone is unmuted and state your name clearly when prompted. Again, that is star one to ask your question. We do have a question from Frank Todd. Your line is open. Hey, how are y'all doing today? Good, thank you. Um, I have a question regarding bylaws. Um, do the bylaws have to meet any um, specific requirements um, to say, like if the documents really age or it's been misplaced? Um, and the reason I'm asking is because I know the primary mission, um, it has to be in place for the entire period under review, <clears throat> excuse me, um, but is there any um, requirements for the bylaws document or anything like that? Hi, this is Elizabeth Hoffman, one of the members of the program team. Could you clarify, are you applying for um, the technical assistance program? Uh, CDFI certification. CDFI certification. Okay, then uh, you, sir, are on the wrong call, unfortunately. Um, this call today is specific for the technical assistance grant application program and the financial assistance grant application program. Uh, the CDFI certification team does do a monthly call, um, and their information on those call-in numbers is through uh, is on the website under certification, or you could submit a service request on your Amos account. But I'm afraid I don't know the answer to your question. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next question comes from Allison Jonas. Your line is open. Hi. I'm wondering if you can tell me if there's any difference in how we calculate income levels for CDFI program versus what we have done in ESIP through Treasury? Hi. This is Elizabeth. I am not sure what the ESIP um, requirements are, but the guidance indicates I believe, um, let me just double check so that I'm telling you the right thing, but are you talking about the beneficiary snapshot section? Yes. Of the mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So for that section, the income levels are going to be um, above moderate income is above 120% of area median income. Uh, moderate income is 80% to 120%. Right. Low income is 50% to 80%. Very low income is 30% to 50%. And extremely low income is 30% and below. And this is on page 39 of the FA application guidance if you need to refer back to it. Um, well, does it matter how we, what comparison we use? Like if we use the state level data or metropolitan area data or census level data to use as a comparison for the area median income? That is a great question. I'm not sure we have um, had that question before. I would think that the um, you know closer to the the area you can get would be would be good. So if you have a, a metropolitan one that's more appropriate than the state level, but if you only have state level, that would be fine too. Okay, wonderful. Thanks so much. Welcome. Again, if you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your touchdown phone. Please ensure that your phone is unmuted and state your name clearly when, when prompted. One moment. At this time, I'm showing no further questions. Okay, so uh, while we give folks another minute or two to, uh, to put in their questions into the queue, we'll take a second we, here. 
We do have a question from Debbie Reed. Okay, great. One second, please. Uh, just to let everybody know, if you go to our website at cdfifund.gov um, and you hover over programs and training, programs, and then today's webinar is on the CDFI program, so we'll click on that. Uh, and if you scroll down and click on step to apply, this is the page where all of the, the key information on the funding round is located. Uh, so we have our financial assistance application materials as well as our technical assistance application materials listed here, as well as the key dates for the funding round and links to access recordings of prior webinars. Uh, so just for everyone's reference, if you're struggling to find the guidance, that is where it's located on the Step 2 Apply page under the CDFI program. And I'll turn it back over to you, operator, uh, to reopen it up for more questions. Thank you. Ma'am, your line is open. You may ask your question. Okay, thank you. Yes, my question is regarding uh, removing supplemental award information from the line in the financial inputs table for um, loans closed in, in eligible and target markets. That's uh, something new in the application, I believe, this year. And it, the instructions are pretty clear to take it out of that particular line in the financial input table. But it doesn't say to also take it out of the actual portfolio, the loans closed line. And when you put that in, if you take out your supplemental award information from the, the line that says what you did in the target markets and the eligible markets, when you put it into AMOS, it is possible to get below the 60% target market certification. I just wanted to know, are we, how, where do we address that? Hi, this is Elizabeth. I'd be happy to answer your question. Uh, I don't think it's new this year, actually. I'm pretty sure we've always asked folks to take the supplements out of that line of the projection so that you're not being held to something in the same places. Um, but there is a section in the application, uh, if the 60%, um, if it goes below 60%, you have an opportunity to, a text box will pop up that you'll have an opportunity to explain the situation. So that would be where you could indicate that you have, you know, a great deal of supplemental funding, and that's why it's throwing the numbers off. Okay. Does that answer your question? Um, yes, it does. It does answer the question. Thank you. I, I would just suggest perhaps maybe making that a little, you know, like that would have been a good thing to put in the the instructions that there's a pop-up where you could put that because you wouldn't know that until you actually got into Amos. But thank you. That answers the question. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'll take that suggestion for next year. Thank you. Our next question comes from Everett White. Your line is open. Hey, good afternoon. I've got a question, <clears throat> question on scoring, and I, um, I think a similar question may have been asked on the last round, but I want to just make sure that we are reading it right. So if you look at the scoring matrix on the fund's website, it looks like questions four uh, and then the four subpart five, six, seven, eight, A, and eight, B are worth the same amount of points as question nine. And so question nine, I think, is 6,000 characters, and those questions are 26,500 characters collectively. And so I just wanted to make sure that we were looking at that right. Hey, Everett, this is Elizabeth. And are you talking about the FA application, just to confirm? Yes. Okay. So I think the issue, um, you know, is looking at. Uh, I, I'm a little confused by your question because, you know, the number of, of of characters available doesn't necessarily equate the point values, and you know, I, I think the questions can be can be weighted separately. So, um, is there a particular part of the base FA evaluation process document that you you are referring to? Well, I guess I was just making sure I understood which questions were in business strategy and which ones were in product, product and service. So it looks so on the scoring review criteria, 
business strategy is 12 points, and then products and services is 12 points. And it looked like products and services was uh, limited to question nine, and it looked like business strategy was questions four through eight. And so again, I realize it's not a um, the character count's not determinative. I just wanted to make sure that yep. we were um, identifying the correct questions for each of those categories. Hi, this is um, Tanya again. Um, thanks for your question. I just wanted to clarify that we don't necessarily look at the and provide that information in our materials as to um, which questions we directly look at for each component of the evaluation process. Instead, we we provide, um, you know, there's the evaluation guidance document so you understand how the different categories factor into your overall score, but it's not necessarily a one-to-one -one relationship between a question and a score. So we look okay. at the application as a whole and we provide um, a good amount of assist guidance in our review materials, our external guidance materials, I should say, and the base FA evaluation document that we make publicly available, but we are certainly not going to provide you know, there's a certain element that, you know, we can't reveal the secret sauce. It is a competitive process, and we um, provide some guidance and information to the applicants, but there's also information that we um, hold internally to our review process, and um, it's, it's not necessarily something we reveal or discuss in terms of what, you know, questions are worth what points, and that's not really how we approach the review process. Yeah, I see. Thank you, Tanya. That that makes sense, and I uh, totally understand that. Um, that was helpful. Thank you. Sharon Hall, your line is open. So, okay. Um, this is for an FA, and two CDFIs are merging as of April 2022, and the merger is in the projections. The CDFI that is being merged um, received a TA and an RRP in 2021 and used them. Um, do I include the TA and RRP in the narrative as awards received and in the um, retained earnings calculator? Thanks for your question. Hi. Uh, oh, sorry. Sure. Go ahead, Matthew. No, thanks, Elizabeth. I was just going to say that I think that this question in particular would be great if you if you could spell this out in a in a service request, just because this is pretty particular to your organization. So we want to make sure that um, that the things that we're speaking to for you directly address your situation, um, and for the good of the the group here, we'll just like table it to the side. So if you wouldn't mind just submitting a service request with that question, we'll we'll process it as quick as possible and we'll get right back to you. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay, we show no further questions at this time. Great. Well let's give it a few more minutes in case any additional questions are popping up for folks. We are getting excited here on our end as when the, uh, the applications are due in, gosh, just under two weeks here, coming up April 12th. Um, we all, we love reading applications. It's the most favorite part of my job, seeing what, what folks are doing out in the field. You all are doing such great and innovative things. Um, so a reminder about that deadline, it's April 12th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern to submit in Amos. Don't wait till the last minute. Go ahead and submit the 11th or the 10th if you want. Um, you can have IT support up until April 12th at 5 p.m., and you can have programmatic questions of us up until April 8th uh, at 5 p.m. So, again, don't wait on those. You know, we're, we're available right now. Operator, have any more questions come in? Okay, a moment. Vicki Frank, your line is open. Hi there. Um, thanks for this call today. Um, Curious about the small dollar loan program PG and M um, loan and um, lending requirements um, with the FA. I know that the FA um, assistance agreements 
clearly noted um, that there was no double counting with the RRP and PPC and disability fund and only between base FA and base FA, um, but there was no explicit mention with respect to the small dollar loan program, which provided um, loan loss reserves, but not loan capital. And I was wondering if you had a response to that. Hi, Mickey, this is Tanya. Um, Hi, Tanya. Hello. Um, so we don't, um, we're very specific in our guidance materials about, you know, what you can and cannot include in our financial inputs. And we do not um, specifically preclude the SDLP um, from being included in our projections. So if, you know, I am not super familiar with SDLP's requirements. So if they have, you know, for example, I know there are some other programs at the CDFI fund where you cannot count um, among programs for, for their policies. Um, you would need to check with that program, but we don't, ne we don't necessarily preclude, um, you, you know, double counting you know, activity and your projected activity um, and your financial inputs in our application with other programs at the CDFI fund. It's just within the, the FA, for FA, you know, with the FA program, the base FA and the supplementals cannot be double counted. Right, and then the financial assistance agreement last year was very clear that the RRP can also not be double counted. All that makes sense. I felt like the small dollar loan program folks said that they it also could not be double counted, but I didn't see any specific guidance in the FA, and there's um, so some winners of the small dollar loan. Since that was loan loss reserve, they're trying to figure out, they obviously, they're trying to figure out if they need to back out those projections or not out of the projections. <laughs> um, well, and so, uh, yeah. So, so just to be clear, for their program, you may not be able to double count. So their program may have different requirements than ours. Every program has their own requirement. Uh -huh. um, so that might be true for their program. Which I means that we would have sure. to back out those projections from the FA base projections. Because obviously if it's, they can't double count, then you, it's a little confusing. If you could provide, if you could, if the two programs could get together and provide clear guidance, that would be super helpful so CDFIs can be compliant. Well, every program has different requirements, and if, you know, again, I can't speak to their requirements, so if they have a requirement that you cannot double count, then you need to follow their requirements. Okay, yeah, like I said, it wasn't clear. There has, I haven't found a clear place where it, it says that, so that's what we were looking for. Yeah, and, you know, I think it would be great if you could submit a service request and we could okay. look into this and respond to you directly. That would be um, probably the best way to approach this. Thank you. Okay. Laura, your line is open. Oh, uh, yes, thank you. Um, my question has to do with accountability and how, um, if everyone on the board uh, has to um, live within a target market area, or is there a percentage? Hello? Hi, this is Tanya. Um, so I think you might be conflating just to, um, are you applying to the TA program or the FA program? Uh, the TA program, sorry. Yeah, so there are accountability requirements to become, um, is your organization a certified CDFI? Not yet. Looking to become? Yep, so there are requirements around certification as, you know, is spelled out in our materials and in the certification guidance on our website um, where there are, you know, there are requirements that you have to have accountability and there are questions around that in our application, particularly, um, you know, for uncertified groups to discuss that, um, how they plan to become, um, meet different certification requirements. And so there is a 60% um, requirement to um, the target market as a part of that. Is that what your question is or is there something more specific you're looking for? No, I was trying to, um, um, I think that's, um, 
I could not find a percentage as far as um, how the board is accountable to your target area. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we have several board members that are, but not 100% um, in the target market areas, and I didn't know how specific that had to be. Okay. So there, so you're asking about your board accountability. I'm sorry, I think I Correct. missed that. Um, there is information in the TI guidance that specifically addresses that. It's in the appendix. Okay. That talks about ways you can, um, you know, different ways that you can respond to that and meet those requirements. Okay, thank you. Sure, and if once you look at that, if you have further questions, please, you know, the best, again, this is sort of a general message you'll be hearing us, please submit a service request because um, a lot of these questions might be specific or unique to your organization, or you may have, um, you know, a nuanced question that would be better served in a service request so we can respond to you individually. Okay. Can we show no further questions at this time? Great, well, let's give it just a few more minutes in case any folks have, uh, have questions come to mind. Um, as Tanya said, service requests are always the best way. Uh, if you have questions after today's webinar or if you're going back through the materials and something's not clear. Operator, do we have any additional questions queuing up? Yes, I see one going through queue. One moment. Okay, your line is open. You didn't record your name, but your line is open. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, hello. Hi, uh, uh, this is Ann Cheney. I wanted to, to follow up on, uh, ask a follow up question to an earlier question. If, if we do not include supplemental awards in the loans uh, eligible target market loans close, it, it would seem that it would make sense to also not include them in the on balance sheet because if it doesn't drop you below sixty percent, you don't you don't get that prompt, but you do end up having a lower than. It does still skew your race, your your percentage. Does that make sense? Yes, I understand what you're saying. Um, I'm not sure we quite look at the percentages in in, in that way. Um, you know, if you're applying for for supplementals, we under, we understand that a portion of your portfolio likely is is dedicated to that type of program. Oh yeah, probably wasn't clear. If I don't include supplemental awards in eligible or target market lending volume, but I do include them as part of the on balance sheet loans closed, if it does not drop me below the 60%, then I don't have a place to explain that. that other than taking that. If you, if you want to submit a service request, I can check on that and get back to you. Okay, all right, thank you so much. Welcome. Okay, we show no other questions in queue. All right. Well, I just want to thank everyone so much for dialing in today. We appreciate your interest in our CDFI programs. We are getting excited to read your applications. And uh, do let us know if you have any follow-up questions via service requests. That's all from the team today. I'm sorry, ma'am. There's another question. Okay. That concludes today's conference. You may disconnect at this time.